Hi, my name is Kevin Chen, and my talk is on bilateral guided upsampling, a technique for accelerating a variety of photographic image processing algorithms. Our focus is on algorithms where the output is an improved version of the input. For example, local Laplacian filters, which adaptively tone maps an image to make this parrot really stand out. Or this technique that can make your photo mimic the style of a famous one by Ansel Adams. Or this method to automatically remove haze. Although these algorithms produce great results, many of them aren't fast enough to put into production, especially on mobile devices which have a limited compute budget, but where images are still getting bigger from the megapixel race. A practical motivation for this work is that a bunch of great algorithms just have an implementation that isn't suitable for the hardware, and we want to make that black box faster. Let's take a look at how bilateral guided upsampling, as well as a number of related techniques, work. Let me illustrate with a simple example. So suppose that you have a high-resolution input image that you want to process. Because the input is big and the operator is complex, Running it directly is quite slow. The simplest way to make it faster is to downsample it by, say, 8x, and run the operator at reduced resolution. However, to produce the final full resolution output, if you naively upsample the result using something like a bicubic or Gaussian kernel, the result will be blurry since we threw away the high frequency information. The, pur the purpose of our method and a number of related techniques is to reintroduce information that was lost by reusing parts of the full resolution input. One simple and popular method is joint bilateral upsampling proposed by Kopf and colleagues. They replace the linear Gaussian upsampling kernel with a nonlinear edge-aware bilateral kernel that penalizes weights across edges of the input. Thus, the result is a piecewise constant upsampling of the low resolution output, snapping to edges of the full resolution input. Another popular approach is the guided filter by He and colleagues. They propose that each full resolution output pixel is a linear function of the input pixel, where the slope and offset of the line are computed over patches and therefore varies smoothly across the image. Now, because these line parameters vary smoothly, they can be estimated at low resolution, then applied to the full resolution input to approximate a full resolution output. Bilateral guided upsampling is a generalization of both joint bilateral upsampling and guided filtering combining the edge-aware properties of the joint bilateral filter with the speed and expressiveness of a local linear model. At SIGGRAPH Asia last year, Garby and colleagues introduced the idea of transform recipes for the purpose of reducing the power requirements of mobile image processing by offloading it to a cloud server. Instead of uploading the full resolution image to a server and downloading the full resolution output, they instead transmit a downsample JPEG input along with a set of statistics. After upsampling the low resolution JPEG and running the operator, they construct from the proxy input output pair a compact recipe which is cheap to download and execute on device. Our method is similar in spirit and constructs a compact representation of the transformation from low resolution proxies and a similar set of statistics. However, we have the advantage of being entirely local without the need to run the operator at full resolution. And although our technique was not designed for the cloud offloading task, our representation is only three times as big as a transform recipe. To illustrate the idea behind our technique, let's start with a simple example. On the left is an input image, and on the right is the result after a user has applied a complex set of filters in Photoshop. 
Although the relationship between the two images is complicated, if we look at a small patch, say around the eye, and plot the relationship between input and output intensity, it's pretty close to a line. What about this patch, which overlaps an image edge? Even though there's lots of stuff going on with this operator, locally, the relationship is close to a curve. For many practical operators used in computational photography, the transformations are curves when you choose the appropriate spatial scale. This motivates our choice of modeling transformations as local curves. Let's focus on the yellow patch and look at what happens when you downsample the image. On the left is the same plot at full resolution, and on the right is a plot for the corresponding patch after 8x downsampling with a box filter. The overall shape is the same, but with fewer samples. To model the transformation as a curve, we need to fit a parametric model to the data, including in regions with few samples or even no samples at all, so that the transformation is valid for any input. For that, we will assume that the curve is smooth since the full resolution patch will be near the downsampled one and we don't want to amplify noise. We fit the curve by dividing the intensity range into bins and fit a line per bin. To apply the curve, we take the input intensity and linearly interpolate between the two nearest line fits. This effectively yields a quadratic spline. OK, so this is true only for a single patch. We need to extend the model to the entire image. Let's consider a single scan line and plot the curve we just fit in 2D. The x-axis is pixels across, and the y-axis is the input intensity. In this visualization, the input scan line corresponds to this wiggly blue line. Notice how it only occupies a sparse subset of the grid cells. The curve for the yellow patch corresponds to this column, and the curve for the red patch corresponds to this column. As you slide along the x-axis, you want the curves to change smoothly with respect to x. For a pixel with a particular intensity, a nearby pixel with similar intensity should map to a similar output. Otherwise, we would create false edges in the output. This 2D grid is in fact the bilateral grid as used in edge-aware filtering, except instead of a single value at each cell, it now contains the two parameters of a line fit. The intuition is that for pixels nearby in space, if they have similar intensity, they should map to similar outputs. But if there's a big jump, such as at an edge, then they can map to different outputs. With this intuition, it is easy to write down our complete transformation model as an optimization. In words, we want to find the smoothest bilateral grid of line fits that best reproduces the low resolution output when applied to the low resolution input. This can be expressed as a minimization of an objective function that comprises data and smoothness terms. We seek to find a 3D bilateral grid of line parameters, which we will call gamma. For each pixel of the input, we try linearly interpolate gamma based on the pixels x, y, and intensity. These are the rows of S transpose and yields the linear model's slope and offset at each pixel. We then apply the linear model to the image. The A matrix is simply a diagonal matrix of the input intensities concatenated with the identity matrix. And we want to minimize the L2 difference between the reconstruction and the desired output beta. Note that both A and S transpose depend on the input image. This makes the solution gamma specific to the input output pair. Since we don't have data everywhere, we regularize our problem with the smoothest priors I talked about earlier. We want the spatial derivatives of gamma to be small, so we don't create false edges. 
And we also want to make the intensity derivatives of gamma small, because otherwise we would amplify noise. This optimization is a linear least squares problem, and we can solve it using standard techniques. And while it produces good results, it is too slow in practice. Fortunately, we can decompose this global optimization into a collection of independent weighted least squares problems that can be solved efficiently in parallel. Let's look again at the problem we're trying to solve. At the top is the input-output pair, and below is the corresponding bilateral grid. Since the input image only covers a limited range of intensities, we only have input-output data in a sparse set of grid cells. These are the data terms in the optimization from the last slide. The regularizer simply adds soft constraints that encourages neighboring cells to be similar. We can approximate this by simply diffusing our data terms into neighboring cells. We call that to fit lines within each cell i, we write down the overcomplete system of equations ax equals b. This results in the normal equations gx equals r. We show in the paper that because everything is linear, storing g and r within each grid cell, blurring the result uh, the resulting vector-valued grid, and then independently solving the small linear system in each cell is equivalent to solving a set of weighted least squares problems where the weights depend on spatial and intensity distance to the data. This version of the problem is easy to parallelize and much faster than global optimization. Before showing you some results, one thing I haven't talked about is color. So far, everything I've talked about has been restricted to grayscale images. We model the transformation between input and output with a 3D grid of lines. Concretely, we stored a 1 by 2 matrix for each x, y intensity cell. The natural extension to color images would be to use a 5D x, y, r, g, b bilateral grid, each containing an affine color transform. That is, store a 3 by 4 matrix for each x, y, r, g, b cell. However, this model is too rich. 5D space is huge, and no cell will have enough data to fit a 3 by 4 model. Therefore, we use a hybrid model. The grid is still 3D, where the axes are x, y, and luminance. But within each cell, we fit a full 3 by 4 affine model from input color to output color. This model lets us effectively model color transforms while still respecting luminance edges in the input. To recap, we accelerate an arbitrary imaging operator by taking input image, damp sampling it by, say, 8x, running the operator, which should be 64 times faster, fitting a 3D grid of affine models, and finally applying the models to the full resolution input. Concretely, the final step involves taking each pixel trilinearly interpreting a 3 by 4 matrix out of the 3D grid and multiplying it by RGB1. The last step is extremely efficient on hardware such as GPUs, which have texture interpolation units. Here are some representative performance numbers for our fast solver. Different downsampling factors and grid sizes give different trade-offs, but for all our examples, 8x downsampling is a good balance. For a 4 megapixel image, fitting curves is fast even on a smartphone. Runtime is dominated by running the operator at real resolution. So as the operator becomes more expensive, the cost of the extra steps we introduce becomes negligible, and the higher the relative benefit. In practice, the other expensive component in our pipeline is applying the curves to the full resolution input on the CPU. Again. This step is extremely GPU friendly, and we can achieve 30 hertz for 12 megapixel images on a smartphone GPU. 
Now let's look at some image quality results. We evaluated our technique on a variety of operators and a large collection of images. I'll just show a few examples here. The first is local Laplacian filters, which is a high quality but expensive operator for tone mapping and detail enhancement. Using bilateral guided up sampling with 8x down sampling and therefore about a 64x speed up, we achieve a PSNR of 36 dB. On the right, you can see the spatial patch where our result differs the most from ground truth, and on the bottom right, the input output curve for that patch. What we lose from our approximation is basically a bit of contrast. This is another result on a recent specialized algorithm to transfer the style of portrait photos. Even though we achieve only a PSNR of 28 dB, it is hard to notice the differences until you zoom in. Again, you see that we lost some high frequency texture around the beard. And you can see that in the transfer function. The same input intensity maps to two different output intensities, which accounts for the difference. Finally, we see a more serious failure with image mapping. The result looks okay when zoomed out, but if you look closely, you can see that we can't represent the hard edges where alpha goes from 0 to 1. The local transformation is clearly not a curve. The same input intensity maps to an entire range of output alphas. I showed an operator where a technique works really well, one where it does OK, and one where it doesn't work at all. This leads to the question, what kinds of operators does it work on? We validated our technique on a variety of operators and found that the two most important properties are that, one, it should be scale invariant. In other words, it should ideally commute with downsampling. Downsampling the image, then running the operator, should be close to running the operator, then downsampling. This means the operator can't have any fixed parameters expressed in units of pixels. This makes sense since if the operator is, say, a 5x5 five five convolution, it affects image content very differently when the input image is 1K by 1K as opposed to 128 by 128. An example of an operator that does require a fixed pixel parameter is, de is Bayer demosaicing, where we have a color filter array that's in pixels. The other important property is that for non-trivial patch size, the operator should be approximately a curve. I see non-trivial because if you choose a one by one patch size, meaning no downsampling, every operator is a curve. Empirically, we found that many useful photographic image processing operators do work well. However, we want to characterize the space of operators compatible with bilateral guided upsampling in a more fundamental way. In terms of future work, we would like to extend the technique to work temporally coherently on video, which should be straightforward. A more interesting direction is to use a bilateral grid of line fits as a layer in a neural network, where it is an efficient model of image transformations that do not create false edges or amplified noise. With that, I'll point you to our open source code and thank you for your attention.